My name is Ernie Sherwagon, and I'm the president of Fremont County Master Gardeners. And this isn't a Master Gardener class, but I was asked to talk a little bit, uh, being the Master Gardeners are involved with some marketing uh, of products. And so, what we're going to talk about this morning is marketing farm slash ranch products directly to consumers. And uh, some of the advantages to buying direct, especially in a small community like ours in a small county, is uh, we have fresher quality products from a likely neighbor. We know people that are, uh, that are selling these products. Uh, the support, it supports the local economy in more than one way. The money stays in the local community and gets spent here, gets recycled around and around again. Uh, another advantage to buying direct or selling direct is uh, uh, due to uh, world shortages, due to uh, global situations, which is getting to be more and more in the news ever since uh, probably in the last couple of years. It's really starting to take effect with the global situation and shortages, and we've all experienced it right here in Riverton with certain items. Uh, sometimes, you know, back in the old days, they used to do the barter system when they when they uh, sold and bought. And uh, I see that happening again more so today on, on different items. Uh, I see it at the farmer's markets all the time where somebody will trade you a dozen eggs for a couple pounds of tomatoes. And they'll, you know, they'll, that, uh, you're seeing a lot more of that. Uh, you know your supplier basically a lot of times on a first name basis and can make a deal with a handshake still. And that's a real big advantage of what we uh, what we can do in a small community like we are. Uh, and then I'm putting government regulation as an advantage, but you'll see in the disadvantages I also have government regulation on there. So it works both ways. And I'm not a, uh, I'm not an advocate of all kinds of regulation, but there is some, and some of it's okay. Uh, just a picture here, we'll breeze through. Uh, just the stuff that's going on even here in the wintertime, in the middle of January, uh, February, of uh, people that uh, produce and, and sell uh, produce on a, on a uh, uh, this, this uh, particular greenhouse is right out by Ocean Lake. So, I mean, it's a, uh, uh, he grows year round in it, and he sells at farmer's markets and also the restaurants. Uh, another greenhouse growing uh, tomatoes this time of year. And uh, that's uh, something where you can find a, a ripe tomato in Riverton, Wyoming in the middle of January. So it's available, it's just not very well publicized, but I think it, the word is starting to get out there. And if you folks have any questions between what we're going through this morning, just interrupt, raise your hand, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay, here's the disadvantages of it, and uh, limited availability of some products at certain times of the year, and that's um, probably more so with just about anything, whether it's meat or produce, uh, and that's basically what I'm uh, referring to here. Uh, if the product is available, processing could be an issue, especially with meat, and that, that you know, finding a, a USDA processor. A lot of times, uh, you know, we're in short supply of them. I think the only one that I know of right now would be in Hudson. There's another one that's uh, going in the middle of getting uh, built and that's up by the airport, you know, a local processing facility. So there is a problem with, with that. And that's why a lot of our, our beef and cattle and hogs and, and everything leaves the state. It just uh, it becomes, instead of Wyoming beef, it becomes Colorado beef. Once it hits the sale barn down here and gets struck out, it's, it's no longer here. It doesn't, it's not considered Wyoming beef, even though it was raised here. So that's another advantage about keeping it local, is you have that opportunity to uh, form a niche. That's basically what we are trying to do here in Fremont County. There's liability issues, and that goes with uh, everything nowadays. If you uh, uh, if you're not 
insured, you know, if somebody gets sick from your, whatever you're selling them, you know, you stand a chance of maybe having a, having a court issue on your hand, a legal battle. And so I do advise people to look into that. I, and I've did some looking at, because I'm not sure personally with the stuff I sell, but I also have found that uh, liability insurance for like a million dollars is not, you know, it's not impossible to get. It's not that expensive. You know, from what I understand, I haven't looked into prices, but from what some people have tell me that have carried that insurance, it's not it's not really that bad. You can get it at State Farm or you know whoever your carrier is. Uh, All State has it, I'm sure. But uh, that was something that you may, if you get into doing this, it wouldn't hurt to have just to protect yourself. Uh, and then you have uh, supply versus demand. A lot of times the demand. Uh, is there's more demand than there is a supply for what we've got available to us here and so things and that goes especially for you know fruits and vegetables and things you know a lot of times this time of year gets brought in from mexico even you know that uh you know being have it you know have it available uh that's something that could change i don't see that happening very quickly you know uh, unless some of the world things uh change more so but uh and then again, on the disadvantages, I have uh, government regulation again, because you can also get, you know, it can help you in some cases. In other cases, it can uh, it can be a detriment, you know. But it's there, and we have to live with it and try to follow it the best we can. Do you have any, anybody questions about that? Okay. A lot of this stuff you probably already know. And if you want to go into more detail, we can try to do that at time, you know, time allowed. One thing we have uh, that has got established in 2015 is what we call the Food Freedom Act. Is everybody familiar with that? That's probably something that if you're not, you need to get familiar with it. And that's one of the regulations, but it's a Wyoming thing. So uh, basically it's, you know, a little, it's a little broader. We don't have the, the, the heavy layers of bureaucracy covering that. We have uh, a lot of times uh, these were written by local people. This, this act was written by uh, sponsors in the state. People, uh, Chip Salazar from here in Fremont County has had his hand in this. So uh, we're in pretty good shape. But it's, it was established in 2015, but it's been amended to in 2017 and again in 2020. So when you go to look into researching this up on the internet and Google in Wyoming Food Freedom Act, you don't want to just pull up the 2020 and assume that's the, the rule because that's just been added to the 2015. So you got to go to the 2015 and I have yet to find where it's all written together. I found that uh, it's spread apart. They have the 2015, which is the original one. Then they have the amended 2017, which is the amendments they added to the 2015. And then the 2020, which has been added to, uh, to the 2015. So but it's not all in one document that I have found. So you have to go do that. But anyway, what it, what it basically states is uh, uh, you're in accordance with the act, produce, producers are legally allowed to sell the following products directly to consumers. And that goes for raw milk, and dairy products, such as cheese and yogurt, uh, home processed poultry and poultry products uh, is allowed. Uh, these items must follow USDA guidelines for poultry processing and, and comply with Wyoming labeling. Uh, there is a restriction on that as far as the number of chickens. If you got more than a thousand, I believe it is, you do need to go through uh, more rigorous uh, uh, regulations. Uh, whole process rabbit and fish. I know of some fish that's being processed locally. I don't know of any rabbit, but I'm sure that's not out of the question. I've eaten domestic rabbit. It, it, it tastes good. And uh, there may be a, a niche for that someday. Um, eggs, or where, where am I at? Yeah, eggs. Uh, eggs are another thing that uh, you can sell uh, directly. They do have, in order to sell to restaurants and stuff, they have to be graded. So there is a grading facility here in Riverton that you can do that. It's uh, you know it's not 
it's not something you can just go up there and do this afternoon. You have to make appointments to, to get it done. But if you want to sell from the, the, yourself to the uh, consumer, you can do that at markets, farmers markets, and things like that. Uh, homemade baked goods, breads, rolls, etc., that can be sold. Uh, homemade canned goods, uh, jellies, jams, sauces, pickles are allowed to be sold. Um, sauerkraut, vinegar, and other fermented foods, raw honey. Uh, consumer and sellers need to be familiar with this law. So I just kind of scanned over it, but it goes into more detail as you, as you read the act. And if you got any questions, I got it on the computer. I can pull it up if we have time. Okay, some of the products that I know are being sold here in the county is beef, pork, lamb, goat, and chicken. Uh, and that's a good thing. I, I think that's, uh, uh, it, it helps out knowing that we're getting the product we're getting. I mean, I bought chicken locally from uh, people that produce them, and there's no comparison to uh, chicken you buy here and when you buy out of grocery store. I, guarantee you that. I mean, there's, I can't, I don't even like chicken, to be honest with you, but I do eat it because it, it's good. Um, but then we've got goat producers, we've got sheep producers, beef and pork, of course. And then we have uh, products including dairy, there's cow and goat milk, uh, cheese, yogurt, uh, all for sale at these markets and you can go directly to the, to the, uh, the person that's producing it. And uh, that's another thing, it's, 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 a, it's a good commodity to have. One thing you, you need to realize with dairy products is uh, the shelf life on them doesn't keep as well as something you buy in the store because it doesn't go through all that processing. And I think it's probably healthier for you to buy the raw milk than it is the uh, pasteurized. But then there's the risk on top of that too. So you have to be careful and be aware of all the risks. Uh, eggs, uh, a lot of eggs in Fremont County. Chicken being the most popular, but there's also duck and goose and turkey you know, and available. Uh, a lot of duck eggs also. Baked goods, breads, pies, cakes, pastries, canned goods, all that. Raw local honey is, is readily available in the county. Uh, there's several uh, commercial guys that hold back on their their harvest from the fall and a lot of them have uh, contracts with uh, co-ops, you know, like Doobie and, and uh, some others around that they send the bulk of their honey to, you know, but they've always, all, every beekeeper that I know of here in the county always holds back a supply to sell to the local people, and which is a good thing. And local honey is, I mean, you can, uh, you can, you can bet that if you see a jar of honey and you put it up in the cupboard and a week or two later, it's starting to crystallize on you. That's the good stuff. The stuff that, uh, that you buy in the store a lot of times is cut, you know, and that's why it never crystallizes. You know, it's got a lot of added ingredients to it that it's not pure. Uh, fermented products, including sauerkraut, kefir, and kombucha, are readily available in the county. And anybody, everybody knows what sauerkraut is, I'm sure, but kefir is a fermented dairy product, and kombucha is a fermented fruit sauce or tea kind of uh, product. We got summer farmers markets uh, every summer here in the. Uh, here in Riverton, uh, Landers the same way, Landers got markets, uh, we'll go into some of that. I believe just about every town, there's quite a few of them in Fremont County. We've got Riverton and Lander, both have a couple of summer markets. Uh, Riverton and Lander has, each has a winter market. And you've got Dubois, they've got year-round market. Uh, Shoshone, first and third Thursdays, Fridays, excuse me, first, first, uh, every other Friday it's shown. So you've got that, and that's year round. Fort Washkie, Fort Washkie, and is it still going? 
Okay. Well, I don't know about right now. Okay. Yeah. See, that's why I was wondering because I know in the summer, Arapahoe and Fort Washington, they kind of alternate, don't yeah. they? Okay. Okay. So there's there's markets out there. This is just a picture of our indoor market and some of our, our dairy folks. Uh, that's basically how you'll buy your milk is in a, in a mason jar, half gallon jar, and it, uh, you set it in your refrigerator, you see that much cream on the top of it. I mean, it's, it's beautiful stuff. And you can see this vendor here is also, uh, he does the baked goods. And Kiefer also sells meat. Okay, has everybody heard of the Victory Garden movement? Last year was called 2020. I'm sure it's gonna be 2021 this year, I hope. Maybe, I haven't heard officially, so I put a 2021 in there. And uh, that was actually uh, started by, uh, or, uh, the movement got started by Griff Sprout over in, in Lander. And, uh, I didn't know nothing about Victory Gardens up until last year. I mean, I I never heard of it until I did the research, but it's been around for lots of years, uh, especially during the First and Second World Wars where it started, and uh, there's a lot of history behind it. And um, I feel this is another thing we need to start considering, you know, to, uh, for ourselves. And you can find that link on Facebook. Okay, and then here we've got, I listed some of this already, but we've got the Dubois Farmer's Market, the first and third in the wintertime, first and third Thursday, in the summertime it's every Thursday. There's contact information there for the Dubois Market. And I know vendors that will go and attend all these markets, you know, that uh, that's kind of their, their income source. Uh, Riverton Saturday Farmers Market, that's uh, uh, sponsored by the Fremont County Master Gardeners, which I'm a part of, and uh, that's every Saturday morning, winter and summer, uh, in the wintertime, it's back here in the lunchroom, 4-H lunchroom behind us. In the wintertime, it's in the City Hall parking lot, or summertime, City Hall parking lot, wintertime, it's back here. And then they've got a Wednesday Farmers Market, that's run by uh, Fremont Local Foods, and that's every Wednesday evening down at the city park. And that runs May through September. And there's your contact information by, for that. And they also have a, a website, FremontLocalFoods.com. And then we've got uh, Fremont County Resources, or the extension offices in both Riverton and Lander. And those are the folks that are putting on today's and tomorrow's farm and ranch days. And then feel free to contact me either by phone or email, either one, and I can you know, kind of steer you. I guess what we can do is, uh, we've got, I went through this thing pretty quick, but is everybody kind of direct selling to folks right now, or are they just kind of, so you probably know a lot of what I covered. It's pretty brief. Okay. Yeah. We just have permission to sell it and take yeah. the risk yeah. of all it it's, is. It's, 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 the, the liability uh, is between, and that's why, and I've got it. We've got, I think, we've still got about a half hour. I went through this one pretty quick. Presentation. I can pull up the Food Freedom Act for you. And we could, if, if people are interested in doing that. Yeah. Yeah, because I have a question. If, like if, uh, if there's days you can get your beef process that's affected and days that it's not. Right. Um, so does that Freedom of Food Act allow me to sell it even if it's not federally inspected? No, it has to be federally inspected if you're going to sell it in the market. You know, uh, if you're going to sell it to a friend or to They're all my friends, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. It seems like it's kind of like either you do, either you're covered, you know, by the law or you're not. Right, right. I always figured it 
better perspective for my own liability issues because I'm yeah. not asking. Yeah, I think uh, well, beef, I'm just beef is a definite issue that they're still struggling with. Uh, okay. So I talked to Tim Salazar just a couple days ago, and they are still struggling with what's right and what's wrong with that. Right, where you can buy a portion of the cow yeah. before it's processed. That's called custom, uh, custom, custom. right? And that's marked right on the package, and it'll be stamped right on the package, not for resale. Uh -huh. So that's the difference right there in the uh, way you, we inspect it. My dad, for several years, has been talking about wanting to set up a, you know, process some of our own right on the farm. Uh -huh. so, and then that's what, you know, I don't know where you can end up with that situation. Is this covered or not? Yeah. So as long as I have the cow sold before they process it, I'm good. So Correct, under the Berkshire Act. The day they process it. It can be custom exempt, yeah. And then on buy the whole thing, they can buy a quarter, they can buy a Yeah. They used to do that with dairy products too, back, yeah. in, back in the day. Yeah, before the 2015 Act happened, right? That's yeah, about when it happened. And, now, and the yeah, dairy folks good. didn't have to do that anymore because that's what they used to do with their milk was sell you shares on the cow. And uh, they don't do that anymore, but uh, because they're allowed to sell their milk now. But beef is a totally different it's thing. Kind of a, yeah, it's kind of. Uh, I'm trying to, to see what it said here in it, about it. Uh, let's see what it says about beef. 